Welcome to this third and last part of this uh, stay at home talk with light and molecules. And I want to discuss when should we do or not do dynamics. And I want to do the discussion uh, based on three very uh, fast case studies that I'm going to present. The first one is the CHCL hydrogen bond. Yes, they do exist. This is a nice collaboration of my colleagues in Brazil, Glauco Boyfeld, Elisette Venturi, and Silmar Dumont, where they are looking at uh, compounds of atmospheric for atmospheric photochemistry. And they are specifically looking at this uh, methyl chlorine, a nice molecule that from UV radiation, it breaks into a methyl radical plus the chlorine, and this is going to be helpful for the ozone layer. The dissociation, the photo dissociation of this molecule is well known in the lowest channels so for low energy UV radiation. But in the high energy UV radiation, does, people don't know much. And you start to look at this. We computed this beautiful MURCI singles and double by Davidson correction with a big base set and potential energy curve for dissociation. And you learn that after high energy, excitation, you can have a few hot spots of non-adiabatic crossings allowing to populate different asymptotic levels. And in particular, there is a, a nice a Coulomb complex being formed in this blue state here that, form, that fragments it into charged particles. CH3 plus plus Cl minus. Upon relaxation, this complex here is stabilized even further and it forms a hydrogen bond, a CHCl hydrogen bond that's kept together by uh, some el electrostatic background. This is probably the first time that people showed this kind of uh, bond in a small molecule. CHCl hydrogen bond, they are, they, they are known in solids where you have the constraint of the, of the bulk, but not for isolated molecules like here. And don't then you have the CHCl hydrogen bond stabilize the complex. Look that for this work, you didn't need any dynamics at all because the pathway for the dynamics pathway was obvious. It was simply the dissociation. And if the reactive coordinate is obvious, dynamics is just a waste of resources. There's no reason for using them. So let's go to the second um, second. Case, 7H adenine, one salvation method. A few years ago, I was looking at uh, 7H adenine. Is this isomer here of adenine? And then I did the dynamics. It's a ADC2 dynamics surface hopping. This is one example of trajectory. And doing the dynamics, I wasn't expecting much. This is a microsolvated adenine. The water is in the in the in the in the QM part as well. And when you come to the to the intersection to the ground state, you see it's surprising. I was expecting to see something very similar to what uh, I saw in, in adenine in the guys phase, 9H adenine in the guys phase, like I showed in the first in the first part of this talk. That's what the puckering, the out-of-plane motion of the hydrogen of the carbon atom. But here, the molecule is just planar. There's nothing there. I have been computing connect section of a molecule for many years, and every time a connect section is caused by strong deformation of the nuclear frame, it might be a ring puckering, it might be a, a twist, it might be a dissociation, but you, have, you must have something. So what's causing the, 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 the connect section here? 
And if you look at the electronic density, you are going to see an electron transfer from water to the amidazole group of adenine. So water is not only disturbing the system, it plays an active role for the deactivation. And that's pretty different from what to expect. We are always expecting that the solvent is going to shift the, the surfaces up and down, but it's going to have, of course, an impact on the dynamics. But we are not ex really expecting the, uh, the, the solvent participate, actively participate in the photochemistry like you see here. And I discovered this just because I did dynamics. Because dynamics can reveal reaction pathways very, very far away from our chemical intuition, like in this case. So if you don't know the reaction pathway, dynamics is a plus. So, third case, as an indole dimer and a missing proton. This is a collaboration of Rachel Crespo, Otero, and Naui Kulivan. And uh, a few years ago, Naui brought this problem to our attention. It was the classic problem in, 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 in ultrafast photochemistry where you have a dimer of azoindol, this beautiful dimer over here. And then you can have, after excitation, you have the, you, you know experimentally that you have a double proton transfer. And the debate was whether this proton transfer was concerted with both protons uh, going at the same time to the other side, or stepwise with one proton and then the other proton. The discussion started pretty much in this Nature paper in 1995 by Viveu and his group where they did the experiments and they, uh, and they proposed that that was stepwise. And then uh, Kasia, Catalan and their co-workers, they, they repeated the experiment and concluded that no, that's, not, uh, that's concerted, not stepwise. And there's a 20 over 25 years of people discussing whether 7AI dimer is concerted or stepwise. Well, when, I, when we brought this problem, I didn't even want to touch that because, okay, what could contribute more after tens of papers? But he insisted and it was a good idea. We did the dynamics, very exploratory. We're just doing simple surface hopping to see what happens. And this is what happens. As in the first diagram, if you have diagonal, is a concerted. If you go uh, through the borders, you have a stepwise. And you saw kind of both. There's some concerted uh, dynamics, so both protons moving together. And there's some initiation of stepwise. But for our surprise, it never never completes. It never goes from here to there. Because this region of the potential energy surface has a charge transfer state and it's very stabilized. And to make things worse, it has a conic intersection nearby working as a sink. So as soon as you have the first proton transfer, the molecule, the dimer, goes to the ground state and there's no time to do the second proton transfer. Then it's just impossible to have a stepwise proton transfer. And it was so obvious that I wonder what so much I do about the stepwise. It just can't happen. Then you had to dig a bit in the literature to see what happened in, the, uh, in this analysis. This is the potential energy surface for the excited state. We're pretty sure that this is the right answer and here we see that this uh, red yellowish part is a local excited state, is high energy, and the blue violet is a, a charge transfer state, charge transfer character, it's low in energy, it's much more stable. What happens here is that when you start the dynamics you can go Concerted, but if you go stepwise, 
you would get trapped in the charge transfer character. In 1995, when Zveyo and his team did the, the, the experiment, you know that when you do time resolved experiment, you get a big mass of data that must be deconvoluted and you must use some model to deconvolute the data. And they use, they base this deconvolution on, on CIS calculations. And they use the small space. And this small active space, uh, this small reference spa space in the, in, the CT in the CIS calculation didn't show any CT, any charge transfer. So they based their interpretation on wrong theoretical calculations. And that was a major factor inducing them to the, to the, the, to the hypothesis of the uh, stepwise transition. Later, in 2001, they did more experiments and then they already saw the charge transfer, but still not a good calculation that the CT was much higher than the local excitation. So again, it was wrong. Yeah, many, many papers on these things. I'm just pointing out a few key uh, references. 2006, Serrano Andres and Emanuela Merchand did cash pt just got the right surface, it's uh, it, uh, more or less like we are seeing here, but they didn't really look at the Hessian of this point that's marked there, and they interpreted this point as a minimum when it, in fact it was a saddle point, and the interpretation was wrong. 2011, TDDFT got the CT and the LE plus um, more or less had the same energy and that was wrong. And the reason behind that was they used a um, rain-separated functional. And rain-separated uh, rain functionals are always complicated. They, you have this rain-separated uh, parameter to control the separation. And if you don't really tune it, you can get bad results. That's the case here. If you, have, if you use a, a, a well-tuned parameter, you can get a good description of the CT, but it wasn't the case there. And in any of those works, and even previous works, or any other work, people saw connect a section. They were never reported. And they have been the first, and not because they're clever than these people that came before. Of course, not the point. It's just because we did dynamics, exploratory dynamics. It showed the connect a section. But and the take-home message for this from this uh, from this uh, case is that if not well set excited state computational chemistry, either pathways or dynamics may lead to qualitatively wrong results. Then, when should we do dynamics? Reaction pathways they can be computed with very high computational level. So, the best that you can do. However, they are limited to few biased coordinates based on our educated guess, based on our chemical intuition, some dissociations, some pathway that you think that should be important. If you are absolutely sure that they are important, so you can stay there, just do pathways. But how can you know? On the other hand, knowing about mixed quantum classical dynamics is full dimensional and it reveals features that we would otherwise miss. However, you have to downgrade the method and sometimes strongly downgrade. The best you can do is to combine them, reaction pathways and dynamics. You use dynamics to explore the configurational space. And you use reaction pathways to check the new paths, pathways revealed by the dynamics. And the second step of using the reaction pathways at high level to check the dynamics is sometimes miss, uh, missing in the literature. So with that, I want to finish my stay home, stay at home with light and molecules. And I, if you want to, to go deeper in this topic, you can take a look at this uh, Recent advance in automatic mixed quantum classical dynamics, I published with Rachel Crespo in 2018, where we're discussing much of the things that I showed here. Indeed, this talk is pretty much based on this review. 
I would like to thank my co-workers, Rachel, Aslishka, Pablo, Yaakov, Liliana, Thomas, Nihaus, Naui, Elisette, and Silma. These are people involved in the works that I discuss in this talk. Also, my group in Marseille, Fabius, Fratik, Saikat, Batiste, Mariana, Ritan, Xinli, and Max. Thank all the support from Amidex, Boost Crop Fat Open, the ANER Project Lab Split, and the Subnano ERC Advanced Grant. And to stay at home, you can also take some literature with you. I just published my first fiction book, One Billion Faces. That's a, a collection of short stories, and you can you can take some time to read that. It's available for in Kindle, for Kindle and paperback in Amazon. So thank you very much.